actually carried the official car survey in so many states in the country. Politically, in 1987, that was when we do what you now call the zero party election. The things you use to earn money are there. It's just for you to know how to think of developing them. Representing the people is you being a trophy of dividend or democracy to the people. The people are the beneficiaries of the state now. The environment is quite friendly. The foundation has been laid for uh, even foreign investors, other investors within the Nigerian economy to come in. It's interesting to have you join us once more on your personality program, Delta Scope. My name is Isioma Adigwe. On Delta Scope, we profile the good works of some social, economic, and political leaders, their achievements, their works, and of course, their contributions to the development and prosperity of Delta State and Nigeria at large. On this edition of Delta Scope, we had the conversation with a vibrant man. He was one time a board member at the Federal Board of Mine and Steel. At 2012, he was appointed special advisor to the Deputy Senate President at the national level. At 2015, he contested for the ICA State Constituency at the Delta State House of Assembly and, of course, victoriously won. Before venturing into politics, he featured in areas of empowerment, not only to the people of his constituency, but across Delta State. Let's meet Honorable Festus Chukunyem Oko, a member of the Delta State House of Assembly representing the good people of Ika South constituency. Honorable Festus Chukunyem Oko. Chukidami. Where did that name come from? Well, the name came from. My name is Chukunyem. So I abbreviate it as Chukunyem. And my father's name is Anto Dami Oko. So that was that uh, Chukidami. We assume it was something that maybe they were fondly called by people who liked it. Everybody calls it to them. They like to have it. We'll say congratulations on your victory as regards the primary selections. And you know, what does it mean? What does it really mean for you, the victory? What do people really see in you that keeps you going and you're coming back again? When you are in office or you find yourself in a position of authority, uh, you should be nice to people. You try as much as possible to humble yourself and give listening ear to people. Uh, definitely, you might not have it for this. There are some people that will like you, and some might just like have a different view about you. That is life anyway. Uh, for people who have a different view about you, you should be able to explain to them the reason why you are doing that. Because of that, I try as much as possible to be nice. Yes, uh, I'm not uh, that proud and I should say to everybody, when you call my phone and pick it up, even if you're asking for anything that I can do, I will speak to you. So maybe that is the reason why people in my constituency find me right to represent them. I represent them in the first and second term, and I came back for the third term for the primary. Yes, my brothers that feel they are also qualified and have the capacity to represent more people. But the game of, and uh, the game of politics is just like that. It was also a contest, and uh, we all went into the contest. As God may have it, I won't be able to. Yeah, that is not to say that uh, I am the best in the whole nation. So you can say that maybe among the people that came out in my uh, constituency, the people that live in my area feel that at this critical time, 
that in ten time will be better for them than somebody who is just coming. Because you see, whether we we'll like it or not, in legislative uh, business, the older the better. It's just like the way they will tell you that the older the wine, the better. That is the same way it is in the legislative house. That the more you stay, the more experience you acquire, the more the job becomes easy, the more you get used to it. So they feel that at this point in time, where the governorship uh, 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 candidate is shifting from Delta North to Delta Central, that we, the Etat South, need to have somebody who is experienced and somebody who is a ranking member to be in the house. You know, you talked about the first and second term. Talking about you said first and second term and yes. the other state house. What would you say are your scorecards? Well, in my, in my the first term, I was able to put in a lot of ways. Like the Gumball uh, Street, Odi Street, everywhere close, and a lot of Charles Street, a lot of food that I have attracted to my people. And all the constituency projects since I came, I make sure that I choose it in choice areas and where the people need it most. I put it in. with that uh, tragedy or without looking at faces or this is my area. No. Who are the people that need it most? I give it to them. And I also make bold to say that a lot of rules, projects, schools, infrastructures I have attracted into my area, my consider, just because uh, I can lobby and also lay out with my people to make sure I do my best for them. And I'm able to say that, yeah, people have represented us in the past, but I think I'm building on what they have laid on them. That my people are seeing that, yes, I'm doing well. That because if not, I don't see the reason why they will so come back and go again. So if I'm not doing well, they want to put me out there because I'm doing well and they are okay and satisfied with what I'm doing. But the only thing is that whether you like it or not, Oliver has for me. They want me to be able to lobby more, do things more, to be able to attract more dividends of democracy into the constituency. So which as a third time if I go back if I go special, I'll try to improve on what I've done before. And make sure that a lot of dividends of the democracy has come to us. You know, stop talking about your scorecards and you've made mention of some projects yeah. you've uh, anchored. Do you feel you've given your people, the Ita Sounds constituency, uh, that robust representation? Well, uh, under normal circumstances, if you ask me if I've given my people a robust representation, I will tell you yes. One. First of all, you ask, what is the duty of a legislator? My duty primary aim is to make laws. And I can tell you as I'm sitting down here, more than 23 bills that I have co-sponsored, and they have all passed through the house, and they are law, as I speak with you, no longer a bill. Then I have moved uh, five motions in the house, and four have came through. So, and I have also done my oversight function. Those are my responsibility as a lawmaker. Every other one is an added advantage. Which means, as a lawmaker, you have to lobby the executive to get projects into your constituency outside your constituency project. So outside my constituency project, all the rules I've been naming for you and maybe street light and all the rest are extra because I was able to lobby to get those ones. That the constituency project, which is statutory, I have located in choice areas and where the people need it most. So, if you ask me, going by that rating, I will tell you that by God's special grace, I'm a poor board. I have done what is expected of me, and I feel that nobody can score me more at this point. Okay, so you have you've had patronage at the federal level. Uh, you were a board member in the Nigeria mine still, mm -hmm. and of course at the federal parasota, mm -hmm. you were once an advisor to the deputy senate 
Yeah. You know, considering these experiences and uh, being at the two term as a two term legislator, how what share with us? Yes, you <laughs> see, when I was in the board, that was two thousand and nine. I was the youngest in the whole federation. Uh, one of the youngest that have been in federal uh, board. I was a first board member. Okay. I met people in that board like uh, Jerry Gana. I met uh, Ulushola AK, mm -hmm. who was then the national legal advisor to PDP. He okay. was the same man that contested for governorship in uh, Ondo uh, State. He was my chairman there. So I met a lot of people, and with that experience, it exposed me to the federal uh, parasitas and the workings in that very place. Then after I contested for House of Rep, when I lost the election in 2011, uh, through the court anyway, and uh, Ike Kuemado, who is also like a political father, like a friend, you know, they meet fit to make me his uh, one of his A's. And I worked with him till 2014 before I contested uh, for mm -hmm. House of uh, Assembly and I won for the 2015 uh, election. Okay. So, with that experience, when I came into the heart, I wasn't a new fight anymore because I've seen the uh, ready mates, I've seen the the, the things to do as a member of a house because okay. I've gotten that experience in the national. Okay. So it didn't take me time to fit in. And not only that I've worked with him, I've seen a situation where he go back lobbying for project and from the executive. So it wasn't a problem for me. So with that, I was able to fit in perfectly well. So it didn't take me time. So mm -hmm. that experience has been done already. And oh. that is what is propelling <laughs> me for okay. a greater tomorrow. You know, the, the, the next election, it's at the corner. And of course, it's going to be a one man, one vote, depending on the BVAS, the Baumodia of Education System. You know, what strategy have you put in place to ensure victory becomes yours? Well, uh, uh. if you say one man, one vote, <laughs> I'll be very, very happy, very obliged because uh, I don't believe in rigging anyway. Oh, okay. If you see, I've started my race very early. I've been going around communities, I've been going around the world. Even before the Delta North campaign uh, team came and we started from world to world. I've done that in a couple of last months. Okay. Going from world to world, talking to my people, sensitizing them making them to understand that it's one man one vote they should come out to tell our people the reason why i have to go back and other pdp members we are preaching five over five mm -hmm. and we have our reason for preaching five over five we are looking at people and looking at the antecedent mm -hmm. and we are saying that these are the people who are best for us okay. whether we like it or not if i continue from Matiku. Abubakar to the last, which is House of Assembly, where I find myself and where I belong at the moment. I feel we have the best eleven to fit into every offices we have, from presidency, governor, senate, House of Rep, and House of Assembly. I think we have our best first eleven, oh. and I can tell you, other parties doesn't have. First 11 are strong as we have. So I feel that my people know that they have the best hands now. Okay. And if we go into that election with what we have, I don't think anybody will win us. Of course. In as far as the first state is concerned, I can assure you that. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. For further clarity, you know, do you do you think victory is yours come 23 elections? And if it is, what are your plans towards it? Well, <laughs> if you talk of victory, I can tell you by God's special grace, victory is certain. I know I have the people on ground. If, assuming you were with us today, um. you will see that we have mobilized, we are walking, we are going around meeting our people, 
one on one, going to the market women, the artisans, and all of them, the chiefs, the OBs in our constituency. And I feel that after we have reached out to them and we have given them reason why they should vote us into power next again, I feel that victory is sure. Very, very sure. I can, I can, I can tell you that. Oh, plans. So, huh? if you say my plan, <laughs> is it my plan on how to win the election or my plan after the election? <laughs> because if you ask me my plan on how to win the election, I might not disclose that. Okay. I will tell you that. Of course, there are strategic plans yes. towards that. Yes. So, mm -hmm. if you ask me my plan on how to win the election, it's for me to sensitize my people and Obviously. tell them what I'm able to do. Mm -hmm. And I will give, present to them my scorecard. Yes, I know that people will want to criticize. Whether you like it or not, if you have, if you have been in government the first and second time, people will criticize, yes. But their criticism will also work on because with their criticism now, we will be able to amend first and where we are lacking, we improve on it to shaping us and make us a good and better leader. Mm -hmm. So there's nobody that is 100% perfect. So there are ways we might lack one or two things. And as we are coming in, we'll look at those places and we have to correct. You know, checking your, your calendar, as, as at a particular period of time, you were absent and that means you were abroad. Well, did you go there to study? Or what was the activity that transpired over there? Well, uh, when we have our holiday, we went for uh, studies. Mm. If you watch, Delta State has been sending us on uh, academic studies, either uh, in uh, leadership, sometimes in uh, legislative uh, business. We're in uh, Washington some time ago. We're in uh, Cambridge. We're in... Uh, London School of uh, <coughs> Economics. I think we have gone a lot of schools in terms of acquiring knowledge, and uh, that is why today I can tell you that Delta State House of Assembly is the most vibrant House of Assembly in the whole of Nigeria. You can check. In our debate, our house is the only house that you cannot debate with reading papers. Oh, wow. You debate as if you are. <laughs> That's, communicating you are communicating so okay. everything we do is not as if you have to write your paper and come and read and debate no you don't do that in the house it's forbidden mm -hmm. so you see that we have vibrant members in the house and when they are talking you know that the honorable member is talking they will communicate <laughs> with you they will convince you okay honorable sir before venturing into politics i i will i'm still insisting there were periods you were out of sites and uh, you were abroad so is was it education was it academics that took you out there okay. let's also get uh, a little experience of your okay. education we know you had a master's in economics at the the delta state university at Braca. Yeah. tell us more about it well when i graduated from delta state university i served in portaco after my service I wanted to work in Nigeria and make a living. But unfortunately, the year I graduated after seven, I lost my dad. Because I have a lot of younger ones, I just feel that looking for employment here might take me time. So I have to go for greener passions. So I travel abroad. The wine abroad, I worked for like two, three years, and I established my own company that is running to today, Chukidendi Limited. Okay. And as at that time, I was dealing on foodstuffs, coming to Nigeria to export African foods, and I was also into money transfer. At the time, I was agent to uh, credit, uh, that's uh, MoneyGram and Western Union. From there, I established my own brand, okay. as in C, DL money transfer and from there I registered with the uh, Irish government with the CBN in there as a money transfer agent. I came back into Nigeria also and registered with the Burudi chain with CBN okay. and that's what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. So I am a Burudi chain owner. I have two Burudi chain offices. I have two in abroad and I have an African show. So, but that passion that I want to come to my 
country and do something has been in me. I never have the intention of living abroad all my life. Okay. Uh, I have that passion. So in 2009, when I was made a board member with Federal Mind and Steel, then that is where that zeal mm -hmm. coming back to Nigeria started all over again. And that was how I see myself relocating into this country. <laughs> that is where I am now working. So during that period you're talking about, I went out because I had to go and look for greener pasture. Okay. And I went in there to go be the glory. I was able to take care of myself, my family, and here we are today. As a PDP chief then, uh, since the administration, the circle is coming to an end, do you think it's the beginning of a new dawn or still the same old structure? Well, it depends on what you call old structure. Mm. If you said, is PDP coming into power again, and that's what you are coming to structure. <laughs> well, I want my party to come into power. There's nobody that will stay if I'm in PDP. What are our expectations from the our party? Our expectation is to build more on what Senator Dr. Ifan Yukawa have done. That's why we say government is continuous. So now he has done his bid, definitely our Right Honorable Sheriff Oboruwuri Francis will come also and build more on what Okowa have done. So that is why we are saying that let us bring in somebody who is now used to the system, who have known and worked with our Senator Dr. Ifa Okowa that is going out. You cannot tell me now that somebody who has been a speaker and also as a T, the longest serving speaker Mm -hmm. as it is now okay and not only that the only speaker that have been two times mm -hmm. a speaker you know after a tenor the next tenor mm -hmm. and now he's coming back again not only that this is the first time that we are going to have a legislator coming in to take over from the executive mm -hmm. you see if you watch there are sometimes you look at things you say no this man is a man with the grace so what we are doing now is reconciliation, trying to tell our brothers that we all should come back and salvage our home. PDP is just like our home. We are members of PDP. We have been in PDP since 1999. PDP was formed in 1998 and will come into power in 1990. We have been in PDP. So we don't have any other party we are going to. to. Thank you so much, sir. Before we go, how about a family, a father, a husband? Well, <laughs> if you talk about my family, well, I'm an orphan anyway. Oh. Yeah, I have a lovely family. My father, my mother, they brought me up in a very good manner. They brought me up as a Christian. They brought me up to respect my elders. They brought me up to have the fear of God. They made me to understand that whatever you feel that they shouldn't do to you, don't do it to somebody else. That's why I'm very conscious of myself. My father will always preach to me the law of karma. That whatever you do to people, you must meet them, whether you like it or not. So mm -hmm. that has been from childhood. I have that fear. If you talk of my immediate family, I have a lovely and fantastic family. I have a wife that I so much adore, I so much love, that know my inner out. If he looks into me now, he understands me. If I look at her, she understands me. And I have my lovely kids. They are all doing well, they are in school. My first son is married. Very soon I will be a grandpa. <laughs> so I'm praying on that day to come. So yeah, people might look at me that I'm very young, but I'm not as young as people feel, you know. So, of course. <laughs> but it's okay, I, mean, I want to tell you that I have a fantastic family, I have a lovely family. We want to thank you, sir, for your presence and sharing your thoughts. And we, and we wish you good luck. Come next election. Amen. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Sir. Thank you. So much said and heard. You know, such a great personality. Honorable Festus Oko has made positive impact in the lives of many, especially in Delta State, with his empowerment projects. Well, to be part of your personality program is important. You follow and subscribe to our different social media handles right on your screen. On behalf of the producer and the entire production crew, I say thank you for riding with us on this particular edition of the Autoscope. My name is Isioma.
Artigo. See you next week.